Sorry, I gotta keep my camera tilted somehow. Dang it. I need a tripod is what I need. Sorry. I need the tripod to hold my camera up. There we go. Is that better? That's a little bit better. I haven't done this in a while, actually. I kind of, during the moving process, was a bit behind on keeping up with the news, so this would be a good chance to catch up on it. Um, I'm not going to catch up on like everything that happened in the past weeks, like prior to this one, but um, the information for the last week in Cartoon News is mostly related to movie releases, because the movies coming out for the summer are starting to get their results back in. Which is really good because it kind of helps us gauge which films are doing well and which ones are not doing so well. The first one up is um, about an upcoming film that won't be released until 2014 actually, but it's still worth noting what's coming out. Specifically I think for not exactly the voice actors, not exactly the producers, but who's directing this one. So um, we're gonna go with this one first, and yes I know we'll talk about Brave in a bit, but first this one. Alright, this first one is um, a movie called Happy Smack Day, which is coming in 2014, and get this, the voice acting stars on this are Rihanna and Jim Parsons, aka Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory, who is an interesting choice because Jim Parsons actually has not done that much work before The Big Bang Theory, and not really that much after it either, like, th that was his big breakthrough role there, so... It's going to be interesting to see how well he does in voice acting, and see if it's a role other than Sheldon, because of course that's what he's going to be known for for the rest of his life. And no, we don't all hate Rihanna, we, we just think she's a bit of a, you know, overrated pop actress. Basically, when a friendly alien race has invaded the Earth, a young human girl and an alien are on a road trip who have to save the world from a second, more hostile alien race. So you've got one group of aliens, and then the more dangerous aliens coming down after them. And this is, again, I, like I said, the voice acting is, okay, fine, it's standard celebrity fare that's going to draw the, the people in to say, like, oh, I know Rihanna, we should go see her movie. But no, that, that's not what's interesting here. What's interesting is the director. The director is Tim Johnson, who's directed Ants and Over the Hedge, which are two really good films. They're both in the DreamWorks canon of films, and DreamWorks has been, like, all over the place. Like, if you want to gauge, like, their level of success, it's been, like, all over the place. But, as far as good ones go, both Ants and Over the Hedge have been two that didn't feel like they were exactly trying to rip off someone else, and they didn't feel like they were, like, trying to stomp on Disney or Pixar, which some DreamWorks films do feel like. And also, they're standalone films. They were standalone films that worked well addressing certain issues. For example, Ants discussed socialism, or basically the rise of individuality in a very socialist environment. And Over the Hedge was a nice commentary, almost critique, on our whole, what am I thinking of, suburban lifestyles there. And it's good to see that the same guy is getting a, more work done. So I may go see it also to see how Jim Parsons does. But that's, uh, that's, again, that's a film way in the future, or two years from now, so we don't have to worry about that one. What do we have to worry about? Well, as far as popular movies being released in the past week, or past couple of weeks, actually, the two that everyone's been really focusing about has been Brave and Madagascar 3. Like, really, really paying attention to those ones. No, 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 you do not get to mention Afro Circus. Chaos, do not... No, everyone... Okay, everyone is allowed to drop anvils on Chaos right now. You are allowed to drop right now. Please and thank you. Um, in the past week, because Brave came out last Friday, Brave is at the top. It debuted with $66.7 million in ticket sales, which put it ahead of Madagascar 3, which was only at number 2, thankfully. And even though it's been out for three weeks already, still the fact that Brave came out on top of that for its opening weekend makes me very, very happy, as it should for all of you as well. Now, not necessarily because Madagascar 3 is exactly a bad film, because I think that there are, from what I've read, there are benefits to it. Like, it's a very pretty film. Like, like art-wise, it's something to look at. Very pretty to look at. Story-wise, of course, we're gonna like just throw that out the window as, moder as standard DreamWorks fare. However, Brave has not been viewed as highly as, let's say, other Pixar films. It's something that I still have to see myself, and for if, 
if what I've heard about it is true, it will be enjoyable, but it will not go down as one of the better films. It will go down as one of the lesser films, down there with The Bug's Life and Cars 2, and it will be, it will humbly move itself off into the ether as a Pixar film that came out, and hopefully will give way to better films come out. Still, at the same time, as long as it can get more money than Madagascar 3, that makes me very, very, very happy. Like, the happiest that I can ever be. No, it's not the end. We have yet to see the end of the Pixar Golden Age. We have to kind of gauge what other films are coming out. And we know that stuff like Monsters University is coming out, which, okay, that does make me a little concerned. If they're, they're pulling back to films that came out over ten years ago and then making the sequel out of it, that makes me a little concerned, but only a little. I, I have yet to give up on them, because we all have to admit, even for any film that they come out with that's not super good, Pixar's films are never bad. Just, they're not bad. They may be misguided, but they're not bad, is the only thing. That, that, that's the only thing to say on that, which makes it uh, hopeful that, at the very least, this will uh, make a good proper Pixar. Maybe not as much as, as Wally. I highly doubt it'll make as much, and not as much as maybe Up or uh, some of the other more successful films, but it, it will at least make a profit for them, because if you see a film made by a well-respected company not make money, which we've seen before, we, we've seen good films, good studios, just not earn the audience, that's a shame. That is a huge shame, so we pray that that does not happen this time which it does not seem to be happening. It, it's, it will not be as popular, it will not make as much money, but it will still be successful enough. Which would be a real surprise, because I cannot imagine that within one movie, the viewership for a Pixar film would like just down like that. Like It would have to be more gradual. But I don't think that's going to happen for a very long time. I do think Monsters University will make a lot of money, because unfortunately, and this is the truth, Franchise films tend to make more money than standalone films do, or new films that come out. I mean, we saw it with the Shrek series. We saw that, like, the, a Shrek sequel made more money than Megamind and How to Train Your Dragon put together. Very sad, but that's how viewers go. They see it's safe, we've seen it before, we understand how uh, we are saying how the characters work, and we realize that we're going to get almost the same kind of story out of it, therefore we feel safe giving it our money. As opposed to this new series, like, how, how dare, no, 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 we're, we're not brave enough to go against that. So that's kind of the idea behind it, I suppose. But yeah, um, give Monsters University a check, and definitely give Brave a view. If not anything, just for the pretty artwork on the hair, which looks amazing. Well, um... Small story to uh, sideline that, which uh, <laughs> it kind of has nothing to do with any of the movies whatsoever. This is just, um, this is just weird. Um, we know South Park. We know the creators of South Park. How many of you would go to prison for making fun of them? Well, apparently someone named Jess Curtis Morton was sentenced to 11.5 years, 11 and a half years in prison for posting online threats on... Well, it doesn't exist anymore, but it's site called Revolution Muslim Website, which included comments against the creator of South Park over perceived insults to the Prophet Muhammad in episodes 200 and 201, which, if you saw, is like that film, is the series episodes where they go to great lengths to hide Muhammad's face because he's so holy that he can't be seen. So, um, yeah, the sentence was in line with the term sought by prosecutors in the case, who argued for a stiff sentence because of the nature of the crime, like, how dare he speak so ill against anything like that. So, um, <laughs> uh, he received, uh, Morton, uh, the guy's, uh, co-defendant has received a 25-year sentence earlier, although the man has also attempted to travel to Somalia to join al Sabab. sorry, I'm mispronouncing that, I know, designated as a terrorist group by several countries, including the United States. So, basically, it's just kind of stupid, people. It's just kind of stupid. I may rally against some animators who I don't like very much, but I will I wouldn't make insults that would get me sent to prison over it. Like, keep yourself in line, at the very least. Just... This is stupidity, and it exists in every medium. This is not an animation thing, only this is live action and animation, and claymation, and puppetry, and porn, and shadow people, and theater, and all sorts of that there. So, 
Please, people, do not be so stupid. That is my request to you. Please obey it. And that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. No, there is nothing wrong with porn. It is very good. Uh, it, it serves a purpose, and if you can get your hands on it legally and support the industry, then good for you, because porn actors need to make a profit as well, and I'm gonna get off that right now. I, I'm being weird. I'm being very weird. Okay, final story, which will make lots of people very, very happy. Very soon after the, um... The, uh, attention for, um... Hotel Transylvania. Which, um... It looks like an interesting movie. It's just, um... Everyone seems to be concerned about the fact that Adam Sandler is in it. Which I don't think is a, is a viable reason to, um... Be concerned about it. But anyways, this is not about Hotel Transylvania. This is about the director. Which is, uh, Jendi Tarkovsky who we all know and love for creating such wonderful series as Samurai Jack and Dexter's Auditory and the Clone Wars series and the Symbiotic Titan. So anyways, um, what is Genji Tarkovsky working on now? He is going to be working on a 3D Popeye feature film. Yes, the comic strip character and cart the really older cartoon character Popeye is getting a 3D film directed by Genji Tarkovsky. And I know I'm mispronouncing that, but I am very sorry. I do not speak Russian. I am so monolingual, it's not even funny. But that doesn't matter at this moment, because this is something that I don't know how to feel about at the moment there. But apparently, according to Variety, this is going to be a Sony Pictures film. Sony Pictures, who has also released Hotel, Hotel Transylvania, and basically is the other denominator who is non-Disney, non-Warner Brothers, who makes all the other uh, CGI films for the past five years. So, what are they gonna do? They say that, um, keen to put, they are keen to put Tarkovsky on another project after Hotel Transylvania is done. So, this one is going to be produced by people whose names I don't know, and written by people who I don't know either. But, you know what, that's not, that, I know what you're all thinking right now, you're thinking, a 3D Popeye film! CGI Popeye getting a whole movie based on himself. I, again, I don't know how exactly to feel about that right now because Popeye's an interesting, uh, an interesting character. He's iconic enough as it is for like the whole, you know, beating the crap out of people by eating spinach thing, but I kind of like him a lot more for, um, his position in animation. Um, he's kind of responsible for helping with the development of animation in the theatrical film era, because first he was a comic strip character, and then when he made the transition to animation, it was a feat. It was a real feat to get him to move the way he did, because he was originally drawn a specific way on the paper so that he only worked in 2D. They had to make him really rubbery, very capable of moving about uh, in, those theatrical in those theatrical shorts, and it was a feat, it really was, uh, to, to get the geometry that required to make him move with the design he had. Very round, very circular style to it. So, uh, a CGI film is going to be, it is not going to have that artistic merit to it. It's going to essentially strip the character down to his popular features. He's going to be a sailor, he's going to go up against Sinbad, I'm sure he's going to save, oh, he's going to save olive oil, and he's going to eat spinach, and he's going to kick ass. So the question is, how do you take that simple premise and make it into a feature-length film for a modern audience is the question. I'm not sure. I am not sure at all. There's um, a lot of stuff that we've seen uh, Gendry, Gendy do. Sorry, I'm very sorry. This could be something that, that proves that you can take a very simple, very old, and very popular premise and make it a good film in the modern era. Like, I, I think a lot of people turn to Clone Wars, how he took the premise of the Clone Wars, that was kind of, that was a good, vague enough story as it was, and turned it into this grand epic that was well animated, well designed, and just very well written, to the point that it outshined the, uh, outshined the actual movies, which shouldn't surprise us because, you know, we got Samurai Jack guy versus George Lucas. The result should not surprise us whatsoever. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this comes out, but again, I don't know how to feel about it just yet, because all we know is CGI Popeye film. I want to see that hashtag, CGI Popeye film. But there you go, that, that's what we're looking forward to, and, or not looking forward to, that's what we're expecting, I suppose. And uh, I didn't know if I got to, this hasn't, um, 
got in, like, it hasn't started production yet, it's only in, like, in the writing stage, so if we're gonna see it, we're probably not gonna see it until, like, maybe 2015 or something like that, so this is a way down the line there. But eventually there will be 3D Popeye movie, maybe. Yeah, I would really, really like that. I would really prefer to see the finale for Samurai Jack. So that's, um, that's your cartoon news for the week. All films coming out, new ones in production, and do not, do, do not make stupid comments online. Please, for the love of all that is good on the internet. The internet already has enough bad reputation as it is. Don't make it worse. That's pretty much all I got. And if you don't have the logic sense to behave on the internet as it is, then we, we must take away your license. We must take the license of the internet away from you. And you may not get it back until you earn it back. And I apologize for not having a cartoon news anything over the past month. I got that back now, and also new location, so I can shoot from here now. And yeah, follow up on the animation news yourself. Follow links. Be active. Be a good fan. And for all else is good in this world, just be a smart person. Thank you very much.